This video is brought to you by Zest Money. Visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to buy your favorite smartphone. It's an entirely digital process with high approval rates, seamless EMI payments, and even zero pre-closure charges. But the best part of all is the zero percent interest on most merchants, and you don't even need a credit card or a credit score either. Samsung can make a good phone when they set their mind to it. The way they turned around their fortunes after the Galaxy S5 tanked is just an example of that. Every S series phone since then has gotten better and closer to being the perfect smartphone. However, it was desperately time for a reboot in the lower end segment, and that's exactly what Samsung has done with the M series. This is Sandeep from Revitalis, and let's see if the Galaxy M20 has what it takes to infuse fresh life into the Samsung sales. From the front, it's tough to say that this is a Samsung device. If you ask an average user, their guess is probably going to indicate that this is either an Oppo, a Vivo, or a OnePlus device. That's because of the water drop notch. While Samsung is apparently bypassing the notch altogether for their flagships and mid-rangers, phones lower down the order, such as the M20, get a notch. But at least it's a water drop notch that doesn't eat up much of the screen estate. Speaking of which, the 6.3-inch display is a TFT unit with Full HD Plus resolution and 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio. Despite having a TFT display, I'd say that this is probably one of the best displays on a smartphone under 15K. The colors are beautiful, the brightness is great, and so is the sunlight legibility. Samsung has done a good job with the display, regardless of what the spec sheet may imply. The touch response is great, and it even feels great to use. And the only slight annoyance I had is that while the display does get bright enough for both indoor and outdoor use, it doesn't go below a certain limit in terms of lower brightness. This results in not so eye-pleasing brightness if you're someone who uses his or her phone in bed or in the theater, or especially if you have a baby around. The design is more familiar at the back. It looks kind of like a Samsung device would, but the materials used are a bit weird. It's built well, but is plastic with a glossy finish that attracts fingerprints like crazy and also has a good grip. We're not quite sure what exactly has been done, but it grips well, and the blue color variant that we have here is the one that we prefer among the two colors, the other being black. The device isn't bulky, especially if you think about the huge 5000 mAh battery inside it, but it does feel like you're holding onto something noteworthy. At 8.8mm in terms of thickness, it still slides easily into pockets and weight distribution is on point. The battery life has been pretty good, standby drain has fluctuated a bit with updates, but on the whole the phone will last even heavy users an entire day of use. We got an average of 8 hours of screen on time, and probably my favourite thing about this phone is the USB Type-C port. Finally, some brand has done it in this price segment. It makes life so much easier and it also supports fast charging. Well, it's not really as fast as the term may indicate, since a full charge still takes over 2 hours. The camera unit at the back is a 13 plus 5 megapixel combination with an aperture of f1.9 and f2.2 respectively. The 13 megapixel camera is a regular camera, while the 5 megapixel is an ultra wide one. Up front is an 8 megapixel f2 camera, and no sugar coating because the camera on this thing is horrible. If you're looking for a half decent camera phone, then this is definitely not it. We'll link the camera review in the description for those who are interested. It supports camera 2 API, so a Gcam port might improve the camera image quality, but the hardware is so poor that I don't think it'll do wonders. Audio over the 3.5mm audio jack is good, but nothing that stands out. The loudspeaker is a mono unit and again, decent with regular volume output, but the quality is good. The M20 is powered by an octa-core Exynos 7904 processor and it comes in 3 plus 32 and 4 plus 64 GB variants. Performance is decent, but there is definitely noticeable lag when you multitask or have several apps in the background. It is especially noticeable when you open up an application where it takes a few seconds to load if there are others in the background as well. It runs on Android 8.1 Oreo with a Jan 2019 security patch and Samsung UI on top. It has support for L1 Widewind, which means SD streaming of content is in, but sadly it doesn't support 5GHz wireless networks, so if you use a fast Wi-Fi network on 5GHz, this phone won't support it. The phone supports dual 4G Volt T with two nano SIMs and a dedicated microSD card slot. Overall, the M20 is a pretty decent device. Aside from the horrible camera, it's a good phone to use, especially with a great screen and good battery life as well as Type-C port with fast charging. But I'm not sure if I would personally recommend this to anyone over the other options in the market unless they are really adamant about buying a phone from Samsung itself in the first place. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to purchase your dream products, be it a smartphone, electronics, furniture, and more across Flipkart, Amazon, and more than 100 other partners.